all of the novel oral anticoagulants are excreted in part through the kidney. And it's not surprising then that renal function is an important consideration when prescribing these new anticoagulants. John Eve. Thank you, John. Yes, indeed, it's a very important uh, point. And I think that uh, at the beginning of the experience with these drugs, it's clear that uh, some uh, doctors had not completely understood what was the importance of, of this point. Uh, so it's necessary to, to, to summarize uh, what we know and what we have to, to do to, to make prescriptions uh, with a good safety. Uh, as you can see on this slide, uh, all these drugs are eliminated, uh, excreted by the kidney, but in uh, different proportions. I mean uh, the drug which, is, uh, which has the higher uh, excretion rate by the kidney is Dabigatron. It's around 80%. Uh, after that, we have uh, Edoxaban, uh, uh, probably around uh, 50%, uh, Rivaroxaban, uh, 35 and Apixaban around uh, uh, 25%. Uh, I use here the slides, uh, uh, the tables presented uh, in a very interesting uh, paper, which was the guide uh, for uh, NOAX uh, published in Europace uh, by uh, ERA. And the first author was uh, Ein uh, Eidbuckel from, from Belgium. And in, in this slide, you see that uh, uh, we have to consider that uh, uh, there are, uh, according to this different rate of expressions, uh, different uh, contraindications. That's what has been uh, approved as uh, SMPC by the uh, EMA. And you see that uh, uh, Dabigatron is contraindicated if the creatinine clearance is lower than 30, Apixaban lower than 50, and uh, Rivaroxaban lower than 50. Uh, in fact, uh, if you want to be uh, very cautious, and that's the case, uh, what we say in my country, uh, uh, we consider that it's uh, preferable not to prescribe this drug if the creatinine clearance is under 30. Uh, we have also to, uh, to take into account uh, the way of measurements of this creatinine clearance. Uh, all these trials uh, uh, were made uh, with uh, the uh, measure by the Cockroft method. It's important because, uh, as we know, uh, probably MDRD or CKDAP could be most interesting uh, in many cases, but these trials have been made uh, with a uh, Cockroft method, and it's important to have uh, the value in Cockroft method uh, because uh, in, in uh, many cases uh, uh, it can be uh, uh, underestimated uh, by the other methods, so it's important to know that. You see also that the bioavailability is different according to the drugs. Dabigatron 4%, Apixaban 14%, Edoxaban 37%, and Rivaroxaban uh, uh, 33%. Uh, so it's important to uh, emphasize uh, that uh, we can give a practical recommendation for dosing in a chronic uh, kidney disease. And we know that uh, we have uh, a lower uh, dosages for each of these drugs. I mean, for the Bigatron, 110. Uh, for uh, Apixaban, uh, 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 2.5 milligrams instead of 5 milligrams. And uh, Rivaroxaban, uh, 15 milligrams uh, instead of uh, uh, 20 milligrams. So it's important. Uh, when the uh, renal function is not completely normal uh, to uh, uh, take into account the fact that we can give uh, lower uh, uh, dosages. Um, there are also other factors to take into account. The age, of course, of the patients, because with elderly patients, uh, many of these elderly patients will have, will have a, a decreased creatinine clearance, and also uh, the weight uh, for uh, frail uh, patients. Um, an interesting point uh, dealing with that is uh, to know when to stop uh, these drugs before a planned uh, surgical uh, intervention. Uh, the problem of uh, a renal function is a key issue uh, in this case, uh, because as we can see on this uh, slide, uh, the uh, duration of uh, uh, the uh, 
washout, I would say, of the drug is uh, directly dependent on the value of uh, the creatinine clearance and the renal function. I mean, uh, for a renal function, uh, you can stop uh, 24 hours before, but for example, with uh, a creatinine clearance between 30 and 50 uh, uh, with uh, uh, dabigatron, uh, it can be up to uh, uh, 96 hours. So it's very important to take uh, this point into account and to have uh, in the mind uh, such uh, uh, an algorithm uh, to know uh, when to stop. And you have also to take into account uh, uh, the uh, risk of bleeding of the intervention. And of course, some intervention have a high risk bleeding and other have a low risk bleeding. And it's also uh, to, to take into account. And finally, uh, with this slide, uh, that's a proposal for uh, 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 the monitoring of renal function. Uh, if uh, your renal function is completely normal, uh, you can make creatinine clearance once or twice a year. Uh, but if the uh, renal function is impaired, uh, for example, uh, in elderly patients uh, with a creatinine between 30 and 60, you will have to do it uh, every six months. And uh, if it's uh, uh, lower under 30, it's clear that it's necessary uh, to uh, monitor uh, this uh, clearance every three months. And also important to say that uh, when you have uh, uh, an intercurrent event, for example, a flu, a deshydratation, and so on, it may be important to measure again the creatinine clearance to be sure that uh, we can make this uh, prescription in a total safety, I mean, to, uh, to avoid bleedings. Well, thank you very much, uh, Jean-Yves. Uh, Raphael, patients with poor renal function, is it a great hazard to use NOAC therapy in them? Since we started to uh, know the area, we were driven mostly by um, the idea of being cautious in these patients. And um, it, uh, it was probably a wise decision why in the ESC guidelines we stated very uniformly across the field of NOACs, don't use them below 30 milliliters per minute of creatinine clearance, despite the fact that uh, uh, some drugs such as uh, apixaban and rivaroxaban had been already tested uh, in small numbers in uh, the Aristotle and in the Rocket AF trial, also below 30 milliliters per minute. But so I agree with, uh, uh, with Jean-Yves that uh, the broad recommendation that we should give probably to, to the doctors is beware of uh, the um, impairment of renal function below 30 as a kind of red traffic light. And I usually project a very simple slide showing that below, beyond 50, above 50, it's a green light. Uh, in the area between 50 and 30 of estimated creatinine clearance is a yellow light and clear red light below 30. However, just for, um, from the... Uh, academic standpoint, from the standpoint of uh, areas of investigation, I think uh, this uh, might change in the in the future. First of all, we have uh, drugs such as uh, apixaban and uh, edoxaban that are uh, uh, have some degree of uh, renal excretion, but this is uh, in the range of 30 to 50 percent. So uh, it's still a substantial part compared with uh, vitamin K antagonists or warfarin that is not excreted by the kidney, but, uh, uh, but still will allow some flexibility, especially if we tailor the dosage uh, according to, to what was done in the trials. In the case of uh, rivaroxaban uh, going down to 15 uh, milligram once daily, in the case uh, of uh, Aristotle, um, apixaban was uh, halved. It was given a 2.5 milligram BID in this range. And the data are that uh, in uh, that range there is a preserved efficacy. And let's also not forget the fact that uh, we have very little evidence of uh, the true efficacy in stroke prevention in atrial fibrillation for warfarin in this uh, range of renal dysfunction. 
So would you recommend that uh, 15 to 30 mils or less than 15, for example, you should be using warfarin rather than... Uh, at the moment, I still uh, use warfarin, but I'm very uncertain whether this is uh, really the, the wisest choice. But I said, since we have to be uh, sometimes teachers and we have to, uh, to, to, to tell people the easiest thing to do, not to, to do too much uh, uh, complicated things, uh, probably the, currently the advice of uh, not giving the NOx less than 30 is still valid. But as more data will accrue in the future, uh, and I know probably some medoxaban data will come up uh, also in this area, uh, we might reconsider this uh, sharp, let's say, uh, denial. Frick, uh, surely we should have uh, a NOAC that's not excreted by the kidneys. Yeah. That would solve a lot of problems. Uh, I think so. Then you, you would have the ideal NOAC. And maybe um, a betrixaban, which has been developed. It's a 10A blocker with almost uh, 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 with a, uh, excretion almost exclusively not through the kidney would be ideal, I think, because kidney function goes down by age. Even in healthy elderly population, the, the creatinine clearance goes down and down year by year. And since anticoagulation for AFib is a lifelong treatment, uh, ideally we should have an, a NOAC uh, that does not uh, need the kidney to be, um, to be to get rid of. Um, but I'm not sure whether betrixaban will be ever developed into atrial fibrillation, our patients. I, I think we'll have to leave that to the uh, drug company to decide, but uh, as far as I'm aware it is at least in development for other indications yeah. at the moment. But it would be interesting it if it were available for atrial fibrillation. But meanwhile, we have to cope with what we have, uh, Paulus. Uh, so what is your policy in outpatients when following a patient who is taking a non-VKA oral anticoagulant and is known to have some renal impairment? Now, <clears throat> when I look at our cardiology practice three years ago and now I noticed that we focus a lot more on creatinine measurements. And I think it's also fair to say we accept now that these formulaic estimations of, um, of the creatinine clearance are acceptable surrogates for the 24-hour urine creatinine measurements, which, which I was trained to do 15 years ago, uh, which we have abandoned at least for this purpose. And so the, the that the creatinine measurement, which was done by interventional cardiologists all the time prior to procedures to make sure that they pick up contrast media and use nephropathy, is now done in everyone. Um, we tend to use a kidney function test initially also to inform a bit our choice of the NOAC. So if we have a patient on a NOAC and the kidney function is reduced, that may be one of the arguments to lean towards one of the agents that is less excreted by the kidneys. And one of the reasons is that age uh, compromises kidney function, but probably more importantly, everything that makes you acutely ill yes. will probably compromise kidney function in those patients more, and therefore could lead to an accidental overdose, which we try to avoid. And then we recommend and do regular spot creatinine measurements uh, as the follow-up. I think one of the most interesting groups of patients that haven't been studied are actually dialysis patients with AF. There aren't that few, they're actually relatively common and they are at extremely high stroke risk, they are at extremely high bleeding risk, um, and we don't know what to do. And if you look at the use of anticoagulants in those patients, it's even lower than in, in the patients with... But we do know, for example, that the bigger trend will be dialyzed away and yes. that the other agents would not be by yeah. And then uh, if, we, if, if I were to practice in the US, I even had an approved dosage of the Bigatron for dialyzed patients, although that is not based on any outcome data. And I think it would be a, really an area worth of further study to see whether anticoagulants, warfarin, and especially NOAX can be used in dialyzed patients at an appropriate dose. So the, we, we, we're learning that we have to look at renal function on following patients and at renal function before we choose the initial dose of the drug. The other large area, Marco, was when patients are coming up to some kind of 
intervention that might be associated with bleeding when you want to run down the anticoagulant. There, there are rather complicated tables to uh, try and help us. Do you have a simple way of dealing with that? Well, I, you showed a slide with the uh, with the half lives of the of the, of the drugs, and of course, with deteriorating uh, uh, renal function, uh, it will increase. And and in the same practical guide uh, where the slides came from. There is a, 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 a table showing uh, uh, with a decreasing renal function the, the time you need to stop your uh, anticoagulation. Um, and of course, with, with the Bicrotan, this is the biggest issue. Uh, in the other, uh, with the other drugs, it's around 12 to 24 hours. But with the Bicrotan, it, it may increase up to 48 hours that the drug needs to be stopped. So in, in, in daily life, what we see happening in the Netherlands is that there are emerging kind of what they call NOAC outpatient clinics where uh, usually run by a nurse practitioner uh, who are uh, managing uh, this kind of issue. So the follow-up of patients with renal function and um, and, and, and the, 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 the stopping or continuing of drugs for interventions is run through, through this NOAA clinics. So in a way, the old anticoagulation clinics are being replaced by lower care uh, and NOAC clinics. And, and, and in some countries, in my country, uh, there's a lot of paperwork involved with prescribing these drugs. So this can also be managed by uh, these NOAC clinics. Furthermore, I'd like to, to add one thing. In most of the phase three trials, the subgroups of patients with uh, renal uh, insufficiency, of course, all, as, as Paulus mentioned, these patients have higher thrombotic risk, higher bleeding risk, and that's seen in this in these studies. But in all the studies, it's also seen that there is no interaction, and the the beneficial effect of the NOAX is seen in the patients with deteriorated renal function as well. Yes, I agree. It's, that's interesting and it's very important. So as far as renal function is concerned with regard to NOAX, we need to know it before we choose the dose. We need to know it as we follow patients because renal function will change, particularly in those with impaired renal function. And we need to know it before we plan stopping one of these NOAC drugs prior to, for example, a surgical intervention. So renal function is pretty important with regard to the management of patients taking NOACs.